Welcome everyone to my presentation on popular scams and how to avoid them. My name is George Dillman and I'm the Consumer uh, Outreach Specialist with the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities. So every day people get scammed out of thousands of dollars by professionals, right, with the finger quotes, looking to separate them from their hard-earned money. This presentation will introduce common scams, what to look for, and how to avoid them. But first, did you know that according to the FTC, consumers reported losing more than $3.3 billion to fraud in 2020, up from $1.8 billion in 2019, and they only see that to continue growing. So we got to be careful. we got to be more careful. This is what we're going to be talking about today, top scams and what to, to look out for, how to avoid them, how to protect yourself, resources, and where to go for help. But first, if it sounds too good to be true, probably is, right? We all know this. We're all aware that sometimes we, we just get caught up in the moment and this great opportunity that just can't miss, and I'm going to make lots of money, and we end up losing a lot of money. So we got to keep this in mind as we're going through this presentation, going through life, so to speak. All right, so we, we divided the, the, uh, the scams into categories, if you will. And the first category that we're going to look at is what we call our, the heartstring scams. Scams that tug at the heartstrings, right? These are they're scams that tug at our hearts. The story elicits an emotional connection uh, that the scam artist uses to convince us to, to give up our money. Common themes to these scams, instant connection, a trust or buy-in, and some type of an emergency where something's needed right away. And that'll be a common theme throughout all of these scams that we'll see. We're going to cover the top three scams in this category, the romance scam, charity scams, and relative and distress scams, sometimes known as the grandparent scam. We're going to start with the romance scam. The number, the number one money-making scam in five states, including our Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, is the, uh, is the, is the uh, romance scam. And whether it's us or people that we know using the, the dating websites or the dating apps now, we, 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 we have to be aware or we have to make sure people that we know that may be using them aware of this scam and, 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 you know, and basically what it's about. Uh, signs of a romance scam. Someone you, met, uh, you just met falls madly in love with you. That person, <laughs> that person has an emergency and no access to money, and you're, you're their access to, to the money. Uh, they, want, they want to talk on a, on a less public forum like a cell phone or an email uh, or email. And this is kind of how it works, right? Somebody goes on and, bu and builds a profile. I, I go onto one of the dating sites, they build a profile. Somebody reaches out to them, oh my God, look at this, it's like an instant connection. We're, we're, we're like a perfect match. Look at, you like this, I like this, you like that, I like that. One red flag, big red flag to this scam. The person is never right down the street or in the next town, either like in Harrisburg or Shippensburg or someplace close where you could meet halfway for a cup of coffee and a chat, see if this is a true connection. They're always in another state, or what's popular right now is they're in another country, right? They're they're doing uh, they're working on a government contract overseas. They're they're doing volunteer work overseas, or they're in the military over overseas. But in six or eight months. When they're back home, they're going to be with their perfect match, and they're going to spend the rest of their lives together, right? So, person reaches out, profiles match perfectly. As quickly as they can, they try to get them on a less public platform. They want to stay under the radar. Hey, let's do personal emails. Let's uh, do personal emails or, or text messages, phone calls, things like that. After a few exchanges, they fall madly in love with the person that they've connected with. Oh, you're the person I'm going to, you're the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. You know, you're, you're the one. And then you get that, that person to buy into it emotionally, and now we're in a relationship. We've never met face to face, but now we're in a relationship. We're, when you come back, we're going to be together forever. And then it's not long after that that the emergency happens. They need money. Uh, something comes up, some type of emergency that my mother uh, or, or some, so a good close friend of mine went, just went into the hospital. We need $2,000 to pay. And as my new romantic partner, you're the only one that can help me. Yeah. 
Uh, and then, and of course, that's it. So they get the person to buy into it. They send the money. And this is a scam, by the way, that's also can be uh, noted as, as what's called a, a reload scam. Scams are they'll keep coming back and, and hit you up for more and more money because, you know, the person falls for it. They send the money and there's a promise, probably a promise. Oh, don't worry. When I'm back home in a couple months, I'll pay you that money back. And then we're going to be together forever because we're, you know, we're in love. And we're, you know, soulmates and all this stuff. And then it's not long after that that the next emergency comes up. And they need more money. And it's the, probably maybe the same story. Maybe something a little different. Uh, or maybe they want to come over for a visit. They don't have plane fare. Can you send me the $800 for the plane? You know, and, and they'll just keep coming back, coming back. These, uh, these scams are, uh, are good reload scams. Or bad reload scams, as, as me. I kind of equate them to, to like somebody who likes to fish, right? Somebody who likes to fish. I go out and I like to fish. I find myself a good fishing hole. I catch a lot of fish. Next time I want to fish, where do I go? Same fishing hole, right? And I keep going back until, until they stop biting or it's all fished out. AKA, I've gotten them, I've taken them for everything they got. Some of these some people in these romance games have lost every penny that they had. Their entire life savings in some case. Because one day this we're gonna to be together and that person's gonna pay me back and we're gonna spend the and it just never happens. It's all scams. So we gotta be careful. Biggest money-making scam in five states, including the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. How to avoid a romance scam? Uh, copy their picture to a search engine and see what comes up. Some of the, I'll tell you what, I've seen some of these photos, and, and for me, I, I, I think, I, and, maybe, and maybe other people as well, I think you can, you can spot a, a, a stock photo versus like an actual photo. But take the, the, copy the picture into, into a search engine like Google Search and Google search the picture. And if you come up with all these matches, that same photo has been used and happened to like different ads and all kinds of different, then you know it's a stock photo, it's not somebody's actual photo. Big red flag there. Search their name, see if there's anything out there about them online. And most importantly, do not send money or other valuables to someone that you, you've not met in person. You know, so. All right, charity scams. Moving on to charity scams. Two types of uh, charity scams. I mean, first of all, as we all know, there's there's legitimate charities out there that people like to give money to. Some some that I like to give money to, but there's fake charities out there as well. And in some cases, they'll 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 set up a charity that sounds uh, sounds very close to an actual charity, right? You know, United Your Way as opposed to United Way or something. Something so close to an actual charity, you think it is the actual charity. Right? Oh yeah, I give to that charity all the time. Here you go. Yeah, and with not th without thinking, you, you think it's the, the the legitimate charity, or they just set up a, a totally new charity with a with a with a, a name that just again just tugs at the heartstrings. You know, the the United uh, Disabled Homeless Veterans of America Fund. You know, please give to those who've given their lives to serve our. Oh my God! Of course, I'm going to do that. You know, the homeless, disabled vets. Of course, and you, you end up giving money without even having to think it. So we got to we got to be careful. We got to take a step back and think about it first. Uh, so signs of a charity scam: unwilling to send information about the charity in writing. And this is one way that you can buy some time to make sure this is a legitimate charity before you hand money over. Whether it's over the phone or in person, or however they're doing, they send you an email. You know, you know what? Uh, I, I'm interested. Uh, send me something in writing. I, I want to see something in writing. I'll read through it. And this is a charity I want to give to. I'll give money to. Chances are, if it's a scam, they don't have anything in writing. It's a scam, right? It's, it's made up, so they don't have anything in writing to send. So that's one way to deter. And, and if, of course, if they do, then it might be legit. Um, the phone number that they are calling from is different than the one you find on the internet or, or someplace else. You research and you find a different number. Wait, this does, doesn't match. And they earnestly push you to send money right away. Right? Well, we need this money right away. Maybe they're having a pledge drive today. And if, if, you, if you give today, they'll double your pledge. They have matching funds to double your pledge. And you'll, you'll be giving 200 rather than 100. And do it today, do it today. And that's, that's what it's about. You know, get you not thinking... And, and, and you're sending something right away. So, how to avoid a charity scam? Uh, one thing we can do is search the name of the charity on the Pennsylvania Department, Department of State has a list of uh, uh, licensed and legitimate charities in the Commonwealth. 
So certainly check out the Department of State's database. Never send money without first confirming its authenticity. Again, make sure, Google, Google the name of the charity. And after you Google the name of the charity, type in scams, complaints, or both, see if anything comes up, you know. Uh, check around, ask around, make sure, do a little bit of research, make sure it's a legitimate charity before we give anything uh, uh, to them. And, and finally, ask questions like how much of my donation go, goes to the organization. Know that it's never 100%. You know, uh, I, uh, how much of my donation actually goes to the cause? Oh, 100% of what you give. Oh, wait a second. Then who's covering the cost of rent and employees' salaries and the market? You know, if, 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 if they tell you 100% of what you're giving is actually going towards the cause, there's a big red flag because everybody has overhead. And, of course, we've heard the horror stories about legitimate charities and, you know, how some of it is mostly overhead. But, you know, it's never, uh, never 100% is actually going towards the cause. All right, and finally in this category is the family member in distress scam, or sometimes known as the grandparent scam. Uh, signs of a family member in distress scam, your family member calls with an emergency, right? Emergency. They want you to send money, usually by wire or gift card, and they swear you to secrecy on that. And, and this is, I usually do a little scenario with this, with this scam. And there's variations of this as well. But this is how it, it, it traditionally goes, and that's what thus the grandparent scam. I get a, I get a phone call, and uh, the voice on the other line, Grandpa, it's me! And a lot of times they don't give a name because they don't have a name. They wait for you to give a name. Johnny, is that you? Yeah, Grandpa, it's me, Johnny! <laughs> well, Johnny, it does, son, it doesn't sound like you. Huh? That's because my nose is broke. I was in an accident, Grandpa. My nose is broke. I'm down in Georgia with a group of friends. And we were in an accident. The cops say the accident was my fault, and they put me in jail. And I'm in the. I mean, here, and I need a thousand dollars bail to get out. Can you send it? Can you send it right away? I'm in here with a lot of bad people, and and I don't want to be here. Please don't tell my parents about this. Let's just keep this between us. And that's kind of how the scam works. And by the way, another, uh, just like with the romance scam, with the with the uh, with the with the with this scam, they're, again, they're never right down the street or over in the next town where you can go help them directly. They're always in another state or another country. My, my father almost got taken, uh, and, and his wife almost got taken by a similar scam where a friend of theirs emailed them and said, Oh my God, I'm in another, com I'm in Europe, and I had my, my return plane ticket stolen. I had all my money stolen. Can you wire $800 to me to, at this number so I can get back home and blah, blah, blah. And they're about ready to, to do it. My father said, well, wait a second, let's give him a call first. Let's just, you know, make sure. So they call him. Guess where he's at? Nowhere near Europe. He, he's at home watching television. Apparently somebody hacked into his email account, got his entire email contact list, and sent everybody in that list this email. And some of them, unfortunately, sent the money. So we got to be careful. Any variation of this. So, but going back to the, the way how it, it, uh, a lot of times it's done with the grandparent scam, ask questions only your grandchild would, would know, or in this case, you know, his friend would know, maybe, you know, by sending an, an email back. Uh, but ask questions only your ch grandchild would know. You know, hey, Johnny, did, uh, did you take your dog Spot with you on the trip? Is Spot okay? Oh, yeah, Grandpa, he's okay. <laughs> Better luck next time. You don't have a dog named Spot. Um, or, or something like that. You, know, you ask them questions only your grandchild would, would know. Um, call the family member on a number that you, that you know. You know, you, you, it's, it's, uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny, I need to put you on hold. I got something boiling over on the stove. Let me, let me put you on hold just for a minute. You put Johnny on hold, and then you call Johnny with the number that you know is Johnny's number, probably to confirm that Johnny's safely at home watching TV or out with his friends or whatever teenagers are doing, and nowhere near Georgia or wherever he says he's at. Uh, do not answer calls from unknown numbers. Legitimate calls will leave messages. You know, so we be careful with that. Some people that I talk to when I do these presentations, especially seniors that I talk to, a lot of times they'll leave every phone number go to a voicemail. Especially if they have caller ID and they don't recognize the number, they let everything go to voicemail. And if it's, they say if it's important enough, they'll leave a message and that person will get back to me. All right, moving on to banking scams. We're going to call banking scams. Scams around financial institutions center around attempts to access our deposit accounts. Once you sign your name to a check, you may be on the hook for the loss. And common themes 
Uh, they appear authentic. They build on trust. There's an immediate action required. And again, the three, uh, three most popular, counterfeit check scams, pay up front scams, and overpayment of items purchase scams. Now, counterfeit checks and overpayment of items purchased are basically the same, so we're gonna talk about them together because a lot of times it happens with a, with a, a, a fake check. Signs of a counterfeit check scam, you were not expecting a check. Uh, you received a check from someone you do not know. The check is written for more than it was supposed to be, and that's the biggie. That's the biggie. And this is, this is the example that I always use with this, with this scam. Say I'm selling a used car. Uh, I, I post, I put an ad on Craigslist, I'm selling a used car that I have for $8,000. Although this day and age, probably $80,000, right? Yeah, um, but $8,000. Um, somebody, somebody reaches out to me, oh my God, you know, like the romance scale. Oh my God, this is the exact car that I'm looking for. Say make, model, year, color, everything I'm looking for. Hey, can you hold the, I'm going to send you the old fashioned check. Can you hold the car for me? I'm going to send you the old fashioned check. I'm going to send the full amount. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, yeah, great, great. So a couple of days later, I get the check in the mail. The check is for too much money. It's for $10,000 rather than $8,000. I either reach out to them, they reach, or they reach out to me, and maybe the story goes, oh, gee, I'm sorry. I was looking at, at several cars. Uh, I sent you a check for too much money. I'll tell you what, rather than writing out a new check and you waiting for that new check, I'll tell you what, go ahead and deposit that check in, in, your, in your account. Go ahead and deposit it. But could you, could you wire back the extra $2,000? Person falls for it, wires back the, the money, and then a week or so later when the check doesn't clear because it's a fake check, they're now out $2,000 or whatever they can get. Now, good news with this scam is the way they're starting to process checks faster. You know, this scam might be going by the wayside or they might be cutting it to the bone trying to get that, that money. So this, uh, you know, eventually probably be going away with the way they're, they're processing checks faster, but it, it's still around, it's still out there. How to avoid counterfeit check scams? Don't accept a check from someone you do not know, right? Or, uh, verify the information with the institution that it is written on. You know, call, reach out to that bank. Make sure it is a legitimate check. My thought is, somebody gives me a check, and they want they want some of the money back. Um, you know what? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll I'll send you some of that money, uh, whatever you need back, once that check clears. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to deposit that ten thousand dollar check, and once once that check clears, I'll gladly send you back that extra two thousand dollars. So, but however you do it, just be careful with that. All right, so uh, pay up front scams. And there's actually several different scams in, uh, it grouped into this, this one uh, scam category, if you will. Uh, signs of a pay up front scam. In order to get a prize, a loan, or some other payment, you must pay a fee, an upfront fee. Uh, promise that the upfront fee is fully refundable if you're not 100% satisfied. And you receive the request from someone you do not know or have no connection to. Let's start with the prize. <clears throat> the lottery scam, or the international lottery scam. I get a phone call. I won, the, I won this lottery for millions of dollars. A lottery I didn't even know that I entered. Millions and millions of dollars. And all I need to do to... What's that? Is pay for it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> all I need to do to secure those millions is pay some upfront fees or taxes. $800, $1,000, but... That's, right? Once I pay those fees, I'm going to get those millions. Right? We, and we know that, and that's the scam, right? There is no millions of dollars. A variation of, of that is uh, in order to release those millions, they need all your information, including your bank account information. And we know where that's going, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful with that. Yeah, yeah, with, the, with the, that lottery scam, uh, we, we don't want to pay anything up front. I mean, why do I need to pay something up front in order to get this prize? There, there's, yeah, there's something hokey there. Uh, same thing with a loan. Somebody, uh, somebody who, whose credit isn't good, they have, maybe they have bad credit, but they need a loan for something. They need, need, need to do some major repairs to their home. They need uh, $25,000 to do one or two major repairs to their home, but because of their bad credit, poor credit, nobody's loaning them the money. Yeah, they're that's willing to loan them the money. Hey, we don't care. Bad credit, no credit, we'll give you that loan. 
Uh, so, oh, fantastic. So, you know, of course, they reach out to me or I reach out to them. We might even fill out paperwork. I'm going to get this loan for $25,000. Again, what I do need to do is maybe, in this case, pay, a, pay the interest up front or pay something up. $800, $1,000 I need to pay up front. And then once I, I pay that, I get the loan. And, of course, again, that's the scam. There is no loan. You know, maybe there's a promise that the loan will be processed in a couple weeks and we'll release that money and then you never hear from them again. So we, again, we've got to watch anything that we're paying up front for. We've got to be careful. Even there's, a, uh, there's uh, several different co uh, contracting scams related to that. Contractors that are out there. You know, I'm out working in my yard and guy pulls up in a work truck. Sign on the side, you know, Ed's uh, contracting service, and the, the rack is in the back of the truck, and there's ladders, and there, there's stuff in the back. And maybe the, maybe the, the story goes, hey, we're, uh, I'm, I'm with Ed's contracting service. We're doing some work on one of your neighbor's homes a couple blocks over. We're repaving, resurfacing his driveway and the next door neighbor's driveway. And I'm just driving around seeing if there's other business out there. And it looks like you could use your driveway re resurfaced. How about if we do that for you? We'll finish up that job. We'll come over. Do we're we're in the we're already in the area. We got extra material. We'll give you a really good price on this. Wow, great. Okay, so we talk. And we, we even fill out a contract. Of course, the deal is, uh, in order to get this great price, you got to pay everything up front, preferably in cash. Can you run down to the ATM machine? You know, and don't worry. You know, when we're done with the, with those jobs in a couple of days, we'll be back. You never see them again. It was all a scam, so on and so forth. So we've got to be careful. Got to be careful with that. Oh, by the way, if if uh, you're ever approached by a contractor or you're looking for a contractor to do work, uh, Pennsylvania Attorney General's office has a list of a li of licensed and legitimate contractors out there. So, how to avoid pay up front scams? You should never pay cash in order to claim a prize or receive a loan. You know, paying anything up front, especially in cash. Uh, know who you're dealing with and avoid paying with a gift card or a wire transfer. How to avoid bank scams? Be careful about financial transactions with strangers. Do not give change from a check. Remember, you're responsible for all funds you deposit to your account. All right, imposter scams. Common themes to the imposter scam, they appear as trusted representatives, maybe government agencies. Uh, immediate need to get something from you. Again, this, this theme, there's an immediate need for money or personal sensitive information so that they can eat in order to get money. And, and again, the three, uh, the three top ones we're going to look at, government representative scam, technology companies, and the credit repair scam. We're going to start with the technology company. I don't have a separate slide on that one. But real simple, technology companies, it started out, and I'm going to use the Microsoft Office scam, because this is, the, I think, where it started with the Microsoft Office scam. Now people getting other products, you know, maybe you, get, you supposedly get called from an Apple representative or Dell, but we're going to use Microsoft Office. I get a phone call one day from a Microsoft Office rep telling me I have all these viruses on my computer. And as a representative of Microsoft, I'm, I'm here to help. For a fee, you pay me a front fee, you give me access to your computer, I'll go in and eliminate all these viruses from your computer. Person falls for it, they pay the fee, they give them access to their computer, they see their arrow moving around, the arrow pulls up this box, and they see their arrow because the person's doing, you know, the, the arrow's eliminating all these viruses, zapping these viruses, eliminating them from, from the computer. It's a fake box with fake viruses. Best case scenario, is you're paying a fee for something that they're really not doing. Worst case scenario, because I now gave this person access to my computer, they could be in there stealing things off my computer. Maybe well, that's the reason they pull up that box. Stealing things off my computer and or planting some malicious software that allows them to come back at any time they want without us knowing about it to steal information off our computer. So we gotta be careful. Got to be careful. Nobody from Microsoft or Apple or Dell or whoever is going to reach out to us telling us we have viruses or something wrong with our computer. We're going to need to find it out. We're going to need to reach out to somebody. Moving on to the government representative scam. Signs of a, of a, of a scam pretends to be from a government agency. I'm with the IRS. I'm with Social Security. Uh, claims you will be arrested if you do not comply won't provide information in writing. 
I get a phone, and this is the one that I think that started it all, the IRS scam. For those of us familiar with the IRS scam, right? I get a phone call. Um, hello, Mr. Dillman. This is Agent uh, Representative Jones with the IRS. Uh, I hate to tell you this. We're calling. We're, we're informing you that you owe the IRS $5,000, and you've owed it for a long time now. And that money needs to be paid, and it needs to be paid today. And if you don't pay that money today, we, I'm, I, I hate to do this, but I'm going to be forced to send the cops out to pick you up and, and, and take you to jail. Oh, my God, how do I get this money? to? And, and of course, that's how. And initially, you know, you, what you needed to do was go to Western Union or MoneyGram or one of these money transfer places and, and wire transfer whatever, you know, the $5,000 or whatever you owe them. Uh, these companies started catching on to this and, and are now policing uh, the, you know, these things. So they've kind of moved on. The, what's popular now is they want you to go down to the local big box retailer and get that much money in gift cards and then scratch the, the backs off, you know, with the numbers. You read the numbers off the back of those gift cards to, to, uh, to them. Why? Because once they have those numbers, they have access to those funds and they can take those funds. It's almost like handing over the cash, just like the money transfer. So we got to be careful with that, you know. Uh, bottom oh and, and and there's and you could you could be like other agencies like Social Security you know maybe it's the same thing I got a call from a Social Security rep and Social Security overpaid me five thousand dollars and I need to pay that money back or they're going to stop my Social Security check one that was popular some a lot of times scammers will incorporate their tried and true scams that they've been doing for years they'll incorporate them with the latest emergency out there COVID virus. There was one a couple years ago at the height of the COVID virus where I, you know, people who were getting Social Security checks were getting calls from Social Security representatives telling them that due to the COVID virus, all the offices had been shut down and, and all checks have been stopped. Oh my God, how do I, I need my Social Security check? How do I, well, that's why we're reaching out to all recipients, letting them know if you, what you've want to continue getting your check, you're going to need to give me all of, all of your information, right? all your personal sensitive information, and I'm going to need to manually put it back into a system, and, and then it'll, it'll start generating your check again, and you'll continue getting your checks. And of course, that was the scam. I'm giving them all of my, my personal sensitive information. There was one with, uh, with Medicare. For those of us uh, the, that uh, have Medicare, uh, you're supposedly getting called by a Medicare representative. And the, the deal was that uh, they, were, they, were, they had these brand new brass-plated Medicare cards for free. You didn't have to pay anything for it for free. All you needed to do was give them all your information, including your Medicare card number. And as I learned in a, in a, uh, in a, in a webinar a couple years ago, giving so that, what, that uh, Medicare card number is like your, your Medicare version of your Social Security number. Yeah, right? You don't want to give that out. Um, so we got to be careful. Bottom line is no, we're, no, no representative from a government agency is going to reach out to us by phone and demand something right away or insist we give them something right away. Money, information, or, or, or both. How are they going to reach out to us? They're going to reach out to us by letter. We're going to get a letter. We're going to have time to look at that letter, to mull it over, to, to, to call them about it, to ask, ask about it, maybe contact a lawyer if needed or whatever. We're going to have time to, to uh, have time to look at it to, and, and to, do, uh, to, to do things before we have to do anything with that. That's how, they, how we, work, we work with the government. How to avoid a government representative scam? Request proof of the, of the debt. Hey, send, some, send something to me in writing. Usually send letters. Send me something in writing telling me that I owe the IRS this much money. You know. Never pay with a gift card or a wire transfer. Or tell the caller you're calling back. Okay. Oh, you're from the IRS? You know what? I'll give you a call right back before you give them a chance to answer. Hang up the phone, and then what you do, you call the IRS with a verified number that you know is for the IRS, probably to confirm that it was a scam. Uh, so, so, you know, give, give them a call back. All right, and finally, uh, the, uh, the credit repair scam. There's, there's actually two types. Uh, I'm going to cover what I'm going to call the legitimate scam. <laughs> First, I think we've all seen the companies on TV, one or two companies on television, right? Repair your credit. Uh, you know, we can increase your credit, your credit score. Blah blah.